Hello, dear. Hello. <laughs> that was so bad. That was so bad. That was so but it was good. funny. <laughs> okay. Hello, dears. Well, hello, dears. Okay. I don't know what this stuff is, though. That's the problem. We're going to be explaining things that I don't know anything about. Well, I don't think you should explain it too much. Just say we have this, 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 and this. Yeah. We need to be explained. We don't have to touch it and install it. Please help. Welcome to Sailing Indiana. We are Lauren and Chris, and we've recently bought our first boat. This is a story of how we hope to swap a life in the city for a life at sea. Please like and subscribe and welcome aboard. What are we doing now? So we're going to have a look at the Rain Marine equipment that we've got in the boat because we don't currently have a chart plotter or a VHF radio or depth or wind or anything like that. So anything you do need, you don't anything, have. Yeah, anything you might need to sell a boat. It's in boxes, brand new, and it came with the boat, but we just need to see what we've got and start researching how it all goes together before we get the mast up and we're able to sail. Because we don't want that to let us to hold us back. At the moment we've got sail bags sat here because the rigger is coming to take the sail bags, inspect the sails and make sure everything's fine. So we'll be leaving him in here waiting for him to come but he hasn't done yet. So I'm just going to try and jump over him. <laughs> <laughs> into Narnia. Yeah, into the beyond, into the room that we never go in. Yeah, the east wing. Yeah, <laughs> this could be harder than it seems. I could just move all the bags out of the way, but... Nah, that would be no fun in that. There'd be no sport in there. Go on, babe. Uh, Alley oop. Okay. Oh, <laughs> long legs. Oh no. Oh, no. Uh, you can do it. I believe in you. Uh. <laughs> He's in. He's in. So in the bee berth, we have quite a lot of storage underneath where things are stored. Um, and so at the moment we've got a stash of new Raymarine gear and yeah, we're just going to get it out and have a play. Mm -hmm. Hello! Hi! Hi! No, we're not doing that because we already did the we thing. We're even hi, yeah, oh, okay. Don't say hello again, we'll do some later. Yeah, you've had that already. Okay, go. Right, so this is all the Raymarine equipment that we have now got out of the forward berth. And we didn't realise there's quite a lot of it. <laughs> Um, it's like taking up so much room. Yeah, so we're just going to do a quick run through of what it is and then hopefully people in the comments can tell us how it works. <laughs> and how to install it. Yeah. Because we have absolutely no idea. This is new to us and yeah. Help. Help. <laughs> just Please help, help us. us. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff and it's going to take a lot of research. Everything's online that we, that we might need to know, I'm sure, but it would be helpful if... Um, yeah, we get a little bit of knowledge if, if there's any questions uh, raised that you could help to answer. So, right, so quickly then, we've got a Raymarine RS150 GPS receiver, but I'm not sure what that does other than receive GPS signals. <laughs> so is it part of the, is it part of like the autopilot system? Oh yeah, it could be actually. I've seen one of those before. Is it like it's self-leveling? Tells you which way. I don't know. Yeah, that's... You let us know. You let us you know. You tell us that what you think there. it is. Ten so... points if you get it right. <laughs> yeah. First one to get it right wins. <laughs> they don't win this, but... <laughs> you don't win anything. Just respect. <laughs> and then we have an ITC5 transducer converter. And having just read on, in, on uh, Google, this will help trans juice. juice. <laughs> this will um, help your system read what is the information coming from your depth and log, I believe. Yeah. And transfer it into language that can be understood by your chart plotter. That's as far as I understand. But correct us if we're wrong. Yeah, there it is. And let Just, us know how to install it. <laughs> yeah, pl Please. plug and play is what everyone says, but. What does that mean? You know, how do we get power to it? How do we get any? Anyway, yeah, there's a bit. There's, a, there's probably a few too many questions to answer in the comments, but we'll do another episode where we are we're actually trying to install it, and then we might get stuck. Then we might be asking some 
proper questions. This is um, phase one. Phase one. That can get, uh, actually, well, yeah, we've got parts of an autopilot system. And we've got an autopilot control head. And that is going to be mounted in the cockpit somewhere so we can easily switch our autopilot on, off, and adjust the course up and down um, by a number of degree. So that's pretty good to go with our autopilot system. I think that other bit is for it, but I don't know. Okay. Uh, what? We've got this. Ta da! This is uh, like an ACU um, evolution of autopilot. So it's basically the computer like the motherboard that, that does all of the work that the Mother autopilot shit. needs to know yeah so that was expensive I bought that bit from um oh, sorry <laughs> from eBay because um that bit wasn't with us and we need oh yeah this bit as well yeah, yeah good no good, worries good, good. I'm on it oh this was a thing that I thought was in there but we have a, 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 a yeah, EV sensor core. Yeah, Evolution EV1 sensor core, UPC core. Oh no, we don't need the UPC code. Evolution Autopilot's EV sensor core EV1. Uh. <laughs> this, I don't really know what this does either, but I think it needs to be, it, I think it can tell something about, but I don't, I'm just talking, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I've done absolutely no research on this yet. This is day. This is day one. Day one of getting this yeah. out of, from underneath the bed. So yeah. one thing we need to make the autopilot work is a um, piston sh drive shaft to make. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. To make uh, to turn the rudder, you need everything or the computer bit that tells you where and when, um, what degree you're going to be sailing. You need something that actually moves the rudder, which is a as a linear drive. That's it. Oh yeah. Linear drive. And I think they're like a thousand pounds or something. Everything is a thousand pounds. Well, yeah, true. They're expensive, but we're on the lookout for one. We don't really need autopilot until we are on passage and we're, yeah. But it's nice to have and it'd be nice to start learning how to use it. But that's it. What's yeah. this? Should well, we'll do this, do this next. One? Oh no, oh, that one? Sorry, I this is like sorry. Christmas. It's like Christmas morning. Um, Raymarine uh, VHF, VHF. Radio. so that was kind of self-explanatory we don't have one set up yet in the boat and it's not been a problem because obviously we've not been anywhere yet and we want to do a VHF course so if anyone knows of any good ones I'm assuming RYA is probably the best one yeah to do. because you're not supposed to use VHF if you haven't got a license didn't know that I'm sure loads of sailors don't have licenses yeah we'll get away with it I think, I think so. we'll be all right. I know, I'm going to put that there. That's out of the way. Yeah, we'll do this one next. This is yeah. just the one I know about. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> you want to be your moment. <laughs> you can tell people if you want. Do you want to do it? Yeah, okay. So. <laughs> okay, these are the Raymarine life tags, which you can attach to your head, your foot, your life jacket. Your dog. Your dog, which is exactly what I'm going to do when we get a dog <laughs> yes but um you can then press these if you fall off and feel like you're drowning that's a really bad explanation <laughs> if you feel like you're drowning I could be drowning you can push these if you fall overboard and it sends a signal to the chart plotter chart plotter and it will send your coordinates so you can hopefully keep track of the person who's fallen overboard so these mm. are very very good and it'll also do it automatically so if you're um if you fall overboard and you leave a range of about 30 feet it will start pinging an alarm and yeah so you might have hit your head on the way over and not be able to press the button yourself so yeah for crew family friends and pets oh. thanks Lauren. thank you yes no problem no problem <laughs> right we also have class b ais transceiver who needs a radar when you've got AIS? As long as the other vessel has AIS, then you can see where they are, basically. It allows you to spot and identify vessels where, um, wherever you are and how far away they are. It will tell you who, like, what their name is and you can you know, hail them on your VHF if you're on a collision course, for example, and things like that. So 
Yeah, AIS is really, really handy. It's very handy. Very handy. We need it. Very handy. It's very handy. Really handy. We need it. So, yeah, AIS is really, really handy. Help um, us install it. Yeah. Next. Yeah, anyway, right. What's, what's this one? What's this then? This is very heavy and huge. Ooh. This is... It's a, <laughs> this is our chart <laughs> plotter, basically. This is the Axiom 7, I believe. You can see it? Yeah. Is that it? Ooh. Well, this is like all singing, all dancing. Hub of everything, hub basically. Of, yeah, chart plotting extraordinaire. For, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This will do it all. Axiom 7 with Navionics and small download chart. S, I don't know what that means. Front mounting kit as well. So includes <laughs> includes two trim pieces or whatever that means. So. It's here. Trim, trim pieces. It needs installing. Help us do it. No idea how. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, I think, oh, and also. We have another bag of goodies. We've got a bag of like loads of the kind of the cable, you know, the blue and the black stuff and the white and the black stuff and all of the special ends and things. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. And also we've got another, um, like a multi sensor. So a tri multi sensor does your speed, your log, and also it's got depth. There is already two instruments in place through the, through the through holes. And that one of them is a log and one of them is a sensor by the looks of it. But I'm hoping that they work. And this is just a spare because if we've got, if it's not, we're in deep trouble. Yeah, we should have already, we should have changed this when we were out of the water because now we're back in the water and it will cost us 600 quid to get lifted out of the water if we just wanted to change this, so. So hopefully it's fine and yeah. there's no problem. Wait, sorry, what's this? What this little well? switch. On yeah, who knows? That's great. There's an on off switch, which is pretty random. You never know when you're going to need things like this. An on off switch. Yeah. Can I have one for you? I'm joking. <sighs> This is what happens. <laughs> so I'm not sure what's missing out of all of this. If you can see there's a glaring hole, hole in our equipment, what's what's going to prevent us from hooking everything up? And I'm not sure if we've got an NEMEA uh, C-Talk box, NEMEA box, but, and if we need one, and if, but if this will do the same job or not. I don't think it will. It might do. It looks similar, but that could be something that's missing. So let us know, please. Yeah, let us know if you think there's something that will prevent us from fitting all of this in. <laughs>